So in the last um, video, it accidentally quit. 32 times 8 tenths is 25 and 6 tenths. So I could get 25 and 6 tenths liters in 32 hours filtering through that sponge. So now I'm on page 422 and I'm going to be going through example number one. Compare proportional relationships represented by tables and graphs. So that's what we're going to be looking at in this example. Mira is researching the cruising speeds of different planes. Which airplane has a greater cruising speed? So there's two types of planes that Mira is looking at here. She's looking at a Cessna, which is a little, um, I don't know, two four-seater, eight-seater, and typically piloted by a licensed pilot, but not somebody who works for an airline. And you can see that the minutes are the X values, and how far it goes in a certain number of minutes is the Y value. And if we look at this data, um, we are going to generally assume that it is proportional, but we can check that out by using the formula K is equal to Y over X. And we can divide the Y value by the X value and see if it is consistent um, each time. Here you have a jetliner, and this one is represented in a graph. Now, I will tell you I'm not too keen on this particular um, graphic of this graph. Um, the graph, nothing is wrong with the graph. I just don't like what they have over here in their speech bubble. The point that they have indicated there, and they're calling it one comma r, represents the unit rate. Um, I don't really like that designation of R because this is your X coordinate, your one right here, and your Y coordinate would be 250, which is your distance, and that's in meters. So the R piece I'm not too keen on right there. Also notice that this is being measured in seconds that this jetliner in one second reaches, can go a distance of 250 so meters. Um, and that's not kilometers, that's meters. So that might be true, but um, in one second, but I'm just not keen on this right here. So down here, step one, it says find the cruising speed of the Cessna. We talked about that up here. We're gonna take Y and divide it by X. And you can see that in each situation, we're getting the same number of eight. So the Cessna has a cruising speed of eight kilometers per minute. That's what that eight represents because it's kilometers over minutes. So now we know that that is the cruising speed. Remember that your constant of proportionality is nothing more than a unit rate. And a unit rate is anything that has a one as its second term. So we could write this as eight kilometers per one minute. And that's what a unit rate is. It is just um, excuse me, that's what the constant of proportionality is. It's just a unit rate, has a different term, um, makes it a little more complicated, but it's typically when we're looking at proportional data. So we can look at proportional data in a table. We can also look at it in a graph. Now, this is not the same jetliner I don't believe as above, although it could be because this is in kilometers and this is in minutes. I haven't really done the math to see if they work out. 
But step two, find the cruising speed of the Boeing 747. So here you can see the time is your x-axis and the distance is your y-axis. Your time is referred to as your independent variable. And what that means is it doesn't really change. Um, in other words, one minute is pretty standard across the world, all right? One minute is something that is, um, well, it's referred to as a standard. We can generally talk about things that are less than one minute and things that are greater than one minute. But it is not going to change. And when that plane takes off, we can pretty much clock how long it's been in the air. Now, the distance it goes, well, that depends on how much gas is given during takeoff. Um, so this is what we call the dependent variable. It also depends upon how long it's been in the air. So the dependent is this can change depending on how long it's been in the air. So when it hasn't moved at all, we start at zero, zero, and then the plane starts going down the runway, and after one minute, it will have gone somewhere between, it looks like 10 and 20 kilometers. We're not too sure what it is, but it's somewhere between 10 and 20 kilometers. We do, however, um, know a couple of places for sure because they are at intersection points of some of our, um, our X and our Y coordinates. So after four minutes, the plane has gone 60 kilometers and after six minutes, the plane has gone 90 kilometers. So when we're using graphs, even though it's nice to find the unit rate down here, it also can be found by looking at other points that line up better with the lines on the graph. So when we look right here, and we look at this is our x value, and this is our y, and this is our x, and this is our y. We can um, look at this in a couple of different ways. And the way that they're introducing here generally isn't introduced until algebra, but they're doing it, so I'll go out along with it. It's asking you to find the difference between any two pairs of coordinates to determine the constant of proportionality. So what that means is you have to look at the difference between your x values and the difference between your y values. And remember, y goes on top and x goes on the bottom. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at um, these coordinate pairs and we're going to call this coordinate pair x1 and y1 and we put the ones there so that when we get these numbers without the x and the y designation we'll know that um, 4 aligns with x sub 1 and this isn't this just means it was this particular point. So we're going to call this one up here x sub 2 and y sub 2. And that means that this is just the second point and x sub 2 correlates to 6 and y sub 2 correlates to 90. So what we do is we look at the difference. So difference means you're going to be subtracting. So when we subtract nine, uh, 60 from 90, or 90 minus 60, 
you'll notice that those are Y values. Y values are the values that are going up and down because this is the Y axis. And so you'll see that the difference between 90 and 60 is 30. Now our X values go horizontally, left to right. And so again, we want to take X2 and subtract X1 from it. And we're going to get 6 minus 4 is 2. So you'll notice that if we start at this point and we go over 2 positive in the X direction, this is the positive side of the X axis, this is the positive side of the Y axis, we don't have the negative sides drawn in. If we go over 2 in the X direction, positive, and we go up 30 in the Y direction, we will come to this other point. Similarly, if I went down 30 and over 2, I would find another point on the graph. And this would be 2 comma 30. And then if I went down 30 again and over 2, you can see I'm back to the beginning right here. So I can use these two numbers knowing that this is my Y because it's going up and down and this is my X because it's going side to side and I can set up using the K is equal to Y divided by X plug in those values and I'm going to get 15. So what does that mean? Well, remember, my Y was my kilometers, so 15 kilometers per minute. Per one minute, again, that unit rate. So down here, the Boeing 747 has a cruising speed of 15 kilometers per minute. The Boeing 747 has a greater cruising speed than the Cessna. So let's look at the triad. The graph represents the rate at which Marlowe makes origami birds for a craft fair. The equation y equals 2 and 5 tenths x represents the number of birds y that Josh makes in x minutes. Who makes birds at a faster rate? So here we're given one piece of information in an equation. So this is Josh. And over here, the other piece of information is given to us in a graph. Now, one thing we want to remember that when you're talking about making something at a faster rate, you need to remember that the quicker it's done, the faster it is. And I know that sounds redundant, and it is to a certain extent. But also remember that this means that Josh, this is Josh, Josh is making birds at a rate of two and five tenths uh, birds in one minute. That's what this two and five tenths means. He's making birds at a rate of two and five tenths birds per minute, each minute. So if I wanted to find out how many birds he could make in 30 minutes, I would substitute 30 in for my X value and I would find how many birds he could make in 30 minutes. So here I know how many birds he can make in one minute, two and five tenths birds. Over here, when I look at Marlowe's graph, you can see that my 
x-axis is given in minutes, which is really good, but it's not given in terms of one minute intervals. It's given in 10 minute intervals. When I look at the graph, I can see that I can find the intersection of two points or several points very easily on this particular graph. So I can look and determine my constant of proportionality. This is 2 comma 10. This one is 20, 20 comma 4. Oops, I wrote this wrong. 10 com comma 2. So in 10 minutes, he can make two birds. In 20 minutes, he can make four birds. That makes sense. So again, looking at my strategy that I used above with my x and my y's. I'm going to rewrite this so it's easier to read. This is going to be my x1, y1, and this is my x2, y2. And I'm going to subtract my y values. 4 minus 2 is 2. And 10, or excuse me, 20 minus 10 is 10. So my y over my x is equal to 2 tenths. I can just represent that as a decimal. Um, this one was represented as a decimal. So that means that this is 2 tenths of a bird in one minute. His unit rate is two-tenths of a bird in one minute. Doesn't even make a whole bird. So our equation would be zero and two-tenths times x. Over here, Josh's equation is y is equal to 2 and 5 tenths times x. So who makes birds at a faster rate? Well, all we have to do is plug in a value, and we just did that. In one minute, if we put in 1 for Marlow, Marlow's only going to make 2 tenths of a bird in one minute. Josh is going to make two and five tenths birds in one minute. So who's making birds at a quicker or faster rate? Well, Josh is because he is producing more birds per minute. Okay. And the convince me is worth talking about. If we were to graph the data for Josh and Marlowe on the same coordinate plane, how would the two lines compare? Well, you can see that the number of birds it takes Marlowe to make two birds in 10 minutes, Josh would be making two and a half birds in one minute way over here. And then in another minute, he'd have five birds made. And in another minute, he'd have seven and a half birds made. So you can see that Josh's line, and this isn't exact, has to start down here at zero. Josh's line is what we would call steeper. The graph of Josh's data is going to be steeper 
because he's working quicker, okay? He's working at a faster rate than Marlowe is.